the question of how will femtocell technologies accelerate the cost-effective provision of ubiquitous worldwide? Thanks, Albert. So let's move to the presentation on femtocells. So you already know what femtocells are. As Misha argued, I mean, 1,600 factor of uh, these improvement in the recent year in, in 40, 50 years come from smaller cells. So um, what, what we're presenting here is um, what can we do with femtocells? How can we have a, an harmonic architecture that makes all these femtocells work in a coordinated manner, not in, just in an isolated manner? Um, so the important word here is network, let's say in Bifemto, in the, this is done in the framework of a European project called Bifemto, and what I'm presenting is uh, some of the contributions that the CDDC did in this project. It's a research project, but it's an IP, it's an integrated project, which means that it's uh, industry driven, meaning that all the schemes that you see here, uh, we are conscious, of course we are modifying some of uh, slightly some of the 3 gpp space and gentlemen, in some cases. The keynote session but, is uh, we are minutes. complying. Please begin to make your way back up to the conference room. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we are complying as much as possible, except when we introduce a new functionality with the 3GPP specs. So we are somehow industry compliant, though we come from the research part. So tra technology transfer is key. I mean, and all these schemes are filtered by, by companies like Qualcomm, NEC, um, MIMO, um, Sajan Compusli in the consortium. So they all tell us, I mean, researchers, uh, yes, but this is not compliant with 3 gpp spec, so we then modify uh, our schemes. So, what did we have to do then? So, as I said, it's not just about a small cell uh, deployed in an isolated way. It's uh, about a, a whole architecture, and this is what we did in Bifemto. And it's not just about the mobile network layer part, but is that standardized by 3 gpp the EPS, the full packet system. It's also, when you move to packet switching systems and packet switching transport, it's also about how efficient you make the transport and how you make both things interact appropriately. So this is also dealt with in Bifemto. So as you see, the Bifemto EPS architecture somehow expands, because we're introducing new functionalities, uh, somehow expands what 3GPP has been standardizing, and we also expand the functionalities at the transport network layer because in a packet switch world that's quite relevant and um, the figure also shows two key nodes in our architectures that is the home node B I mean that is substantially <coughs> modified particularly for some of the scenarios that we are considering and also the local center gateway the LFGW which is a new node that we introduce in uh, some deployments of femtocells that we call networks of femtocells. What's the difference between a uh, regular deployment of the standalone femtocells and a network of femtocells? It's cooperation, basically. So we want uh, to have, if we have millions of femtocells deployed, you need to have some scalable ways of deploying them. So then, uh, what you need to do first is to isolate somehow the behavior of the network of femtocells from the core so that the impact in both in terms of signaling and data is reduced. So this node there that we are defining is allowing us to do that, to confine somehow as much control traffic and as much data traffic to the local network uh, so that it can escape, so we, we can have scalable deployments. Of course, uh, we are doing that complying, as I said, with 3GPP specs. So this means that it's, this node is almost transparent, except for the management part, uh, to the core and to regular homing of this, right? So this is what we are doing. So if you want to have more information, deliverables, there are many public deliverables of Big Ten, so you can uh, go to that website and uh, of course also to the CTTC website where you will find pointers. So, um, 
talking again about networks of chemical cells. We, of course, in Bifento, we're also uh, discussing about the standalone deployments of chemical cells, about mobile chemical cells, about outdoor relays. But let me just uh, focus on, on this one. And this, in fact, is a diagram of, of the test that we currently have deployed in the city to see. Um, what you see there is uh, somehow of a mesh of femtocells cells deployed in the city to see premises, um, which are wirelessly connected. So we have kind of a, a wi all wireless local backhole. And this is our network of femtocells. cells. And some of these femtocells cells are acting as gateways towards the core. So these gateways will confine the traffic <coughs> to this network of femtocells cells to have scalable deployments. And then, of course, uh, this introduces uh, some challenges in terms of mobility on, on uh, how they organize, how they handle data, how, uh, what are the most appropriate points where you can offload traffic. Uh, well, there are certain challenges of, uh, that we, we are talking about afterwards, but uh, what is the main application that, that uh, these kind of scenarios may have? So, one example could be this uh, this conference hall. So you, you can you have a fast uh, and cheap deployment because you have wireless backholes between temple cells uh, in conference halls, in stadiums, in temporary deployments. But also when you when you start uh, seeing discussions on on uh, outdoor deployments of small cells in in lamp posts. Uh, well, it's not quite likely that you will have a fiber to each of these small cells, so wireless uh, deployments start uh, making sense, all wireless deployments start making sense. And uh, I just recently read some news of the YGIC Alliance setting uh, their target as, as uh, trying to, to uh, build small cells to apply these, these uh, 1 gigabit per second or more uh, uh, wireless links to deploy a small cells. So we are there. I mean, the architecture of Defender is prepared for doing that. So, um, and of course, in, in the CDC, we also have some framework that allows us to be productive in the sense that we can completely change the, the, uh, the scenarios that we're testing in terms of the traffic that we introduce on how we handle the experiments and all that. As I said, this is already built in CDC and we are testing it, in fact, now because Vipento is finishing in June and we are presenting it uh, to the Commission in September. So, and it will be done, past, part of the demo will be done here. <coughs> so, one of the things, as I said, one of the challenges at the transfer network layer is, is the backhole. The, these local backholes I, I was just mentioning. So if you have a packet switch network and you have a wireless backhole, one of the challenges is how to best use these resources at the transfer network layer. So how you make sure that all the resources that you're using are really used and you don't spend money that is not really used, right? So uh, what we did uh, was to design schemes at the transfer network layer um, that adapt to the traffic conditions of the wireless network and depending on how congested it is, you can distribute more so that you evenly consume the resources of the wireless network. What you see here, what you see there is a matrix. This matrix, each circle represents a node. This is a simulated node in this case. But we, we are doing the same test over the testbed that I just mentioned. So each circle is a node. And the darker the color, it means that the more packets are handled by that node in the experiment. So if you have a source here and a destination there, uh, if you have a congested network, you can dynamically adapt the distribution of the traffic. And if you have a less congested network, you just have shortest path. So this is something that we need. And the results uh, right now, uh, up to now, we are, as I said, we are extensively testing it now. But uh, they are quite good. What, what this figure is presenting is the delays that we are getting. So as you put more traffic, as we go to the right in the, in the figure, as you put more traffic in our scheme, the improvement <coughs> in delay is much better. And not just the improvement in average delay, but on the distribution of the delays. So. Uh, the, this version of delays is also much better in our scheme. 
despite distributing more the traffic depending on the traffic congestion. This is one of the things, this is one of the challenges that we are facing at the transport network layer. Of course, always thinking, taking into account that we have 3 GPP traffic on top. And then, of course, the other big issue is uh, we want this network of Femtosoft to work in a coordinated manner. So for that, SON uh, at different levels, not just the way 3GPP uh, is standardizing it now. As I said, you also need some kind of SON at the transfer network layer, self-organizing and working, right? So there are issues at the, at the location management level. We design schemes so that uh, you have an efficient signaling uh, when you try, by using tracking area lists, you dynamically adapt the size of this tracking area list to have the best trade-off between tracking area updates <coughs> and paging updates, right? So this is one of the challenges we are, we are facing. Other challenges we are facing, and uh, we studied and proposed solutions, is IP flow management. Uh, and I include their uploading. Uh, not just analytically, but also experimentally, we are evaluating this kind of technologies. So, how to best, depending on the conditions, and not just using 3GPP standardized uh, technologies, but also Wi Fi, for example. When you have multiple networks, what's the best way to send the flows this way, that other way, aggregated, distributed, in different ways? So, this is something that we are also doing at the CDC. And in terms of SON, of course, the, let's say the more traditional way of understanding uh, SON in the way 3GPP understand it, radio resource management. So we've been designing, conceiving, and uh, truly evaluating machine learning te techniques for power allocation. Other partners have been testing uh, in any scenario you can imagine between macro, femto, interface between macro, uh, femtos themselves in the network of femtos. So, I mean, the important thing is that there's cooperation. It's not just a deployment of uh, a small cells uh, in, a, in an isolated way. I mean, they should work in a cooperative way, right? And uh, we are also doing it experimentally. So our colleagues at the engineering unit are testing the scenarios in which uh, the macro UE measures the interference received by femtos, sends it to the to the macro, which in turn sends it to the femto, and then the femto adapts the behavior not to disturb the transmission of the macro. And this is done experimentally in the CDDC also by adapting the the bands not to disturb the transmission of the macro. Right? And uh, we are we are also testing other issues, as I said, uh, like the mobile femto cells, like uh, uh, yeah, access control schemes to local services when you come to a certain organization uh, and uh, well, but this is just some of the issues that we are dealing with in Bifento and in the CDDC as contribution to Bifento. Visit cttc.es for more information.